Good morning, my dear 12th class students. Today, I am going to take second chapter from Flamingo, Lost Spring, Stories of Stolen Childhood. So as the title itself is suggesting, there are two stories in it. And those both the stories are written by Anis Jung, who comes from a background which is full of literature. She was born in Raurkela and spent her childhood and adolescence in Hyderabad. Received her education in Hyderabad and in the United States of America. So from there, the background is this. And her parents were both writers. So writing came quite easily to her. And Anis Jung then began her career as a writer in India. And this is an excerpt which is taken from her book titled Lost Spring Stories of Stolen Childhood. Now what she is doing in these two stories is she is analyzing the grinding poverty, poverty in India and traditions which condemn these children to a life of exploitation. The children in both these stories are suffering with exploitation. The children in both these stories are the major sufferers. If one story is somewhere near the outskirts of Delhi called Simapuri, where Saheb Alam and his friends are coming across on his junk as rag pickers. For them, their gold is what in what the upper class upper middle class, rich class throw because they sometimes find an apple or an eating item or sometimes even a rupee or a coin which is like a gold for them. They keep on with their bags. They are the rag pickers and from your dust, from your stuff which you think is not useful to you anyway, you throw it but it is useful for someone. And that's poverty at its pinnacle. Anish Jung brings Saheb Alam. And if you lead the name Saheb Alam, it is the creator or the Saheb Alam is no one but God. And the God is the rag picker over here. Searching for goodness, even in the misdeed or even in the dust. So Anis is asking certain questions. She is trying to develop acquaintance and she is also asking why are you not wearing chappals and to which they say uh, they hide their poverty by saying no in our uh, we are not we don't wear chappals. She also remembers a pandit of her old village near Hyderabad uh, where, where uh, the, 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 the people used to keep their chapels or their shoes outside the temple and uh, people used to think of uh, stealing them also. She's also remembering that anecdote. And then she also says, why don't you go to school to which Sahib Alam says, uh, I would like to go someday. Anis Jung, just like that, in a very cordial way, she says, okay, I will open a school, will you come? Uh, yeah, I will come. And Sahib Alam is a learner of, from life. He might have not gone to school, but life is teaching him daily. And in that, whenever now he meets and is young, he asks, uh, have your school started? I would like to come. So Sahib Alam then got, gets a job in a tea stall where he is going to be paid something like 800 rupees per month. He is going to be paid 800 rupees something in the month and uh, apart from that he will have to do some job of giving tea, washing the tea utensils uh, or the cups uh, and serving people, that type of a job. But there he will be having a malik. Sarkar, Sahib Alam, God having a malik doesn't suit. He 
Yeah, it doesn't suit to Sahib Alam also because as a rack picker, he is free to go wherever he wants to go. Is he? Is he free to work at whatever times he wants to work? But here he has been bonded. A definite time is there, and he is not happy. So a childhood which has to be. This is the lost spring of Sahib Alam and the other people. This is one story, and then starts the second story, which starts from the. town of firozabad firozabad a town which is also known as the bangal town because lot of bangal huge amount enormous amount almost entire india gets its bangals from firozabad but where does it this bangals which are been a uh, sign of uh, suhag of prosperity of color of life where it has been been made it has been made in the slums of firozabad by people the entire families are into slum area where the furnace is rising the the glass is heated and been molded and been colored health is going down poverty is there most of them are bangladeshis sahib alam also is a bangladeshi so they are not even indians so don't they don't have any rights the only right they have is to vote because they vote for government and vote counts but otherwise all this jamidars and all this bureaucrats and all this politicians and all this policemen they are just taking undue advantage of their being they are not helping them same is the case in firozabad the illness is there and it has gone so much that now mukesh who is a boy over there about whom we will talk later on mukesh mother mukesh wife his elder son's wife everybody thinks that this is their destiny this is fatalism fatalism is when you think this is my destiny nothing can be done meri to kismat hi aisi thi they have accepted it that nothing can change and if the diseases are coming and the eyes are the illness are coming the migraine is there the eyes are going on the lung diseases are there the respiratory diseases because of the furnace and the surrounding atmosphere if it is there it is all fate it is not governance it is not organization it is not proper doing of the work which is causing death it is fate fate god bhagwan hi to kismat likhta na so that's what anis jang is pointing it out that the tradition the customs the exploitation the poverty where it is leading india and especially if it is good for upper class what about the lower class what about the poor it's asking questions mukesh is one boy who is thinking differently mukesh does not want to be see every child who, who whomsoever takes birth over there ends up working for bengal factory it's in their house they live in a small place along with their beef along with their cattle that's how their life is running but mukesh is thinking differently he wants to be a mechanic he wants to be a car driver a car mechanic but the surroundings are not there and yet he dreams to be something else so how will he achieve it will he achieve it that's the big question and his jang is asking will the society help him achieve it will he himself do something to achieve it how will he achieve it this will be the question which will be asked to you also how will mukesh achieve his goal achieve his ambition how will you achieve your goal as a 11th class student how will you achieve if you have thought of yourself to be a doctor or an engineer or a pilot or a military man or a policeman or a politician how will you achieve your goal that's the big question that's lost spring is asking
and that's what Anisjan does. Again, when, uh, sorry, I said 11th class. <laughs> sorry, that was a mistiming because I just taught 11th class students, so they were in my mind. 12th class, citizens of India, after leaving this school, what will you do? How will you achieve your goal? 12th class, students. And then do write the question answers, complete your copy, understanding the text, talking about the text, and also thinking about language. The entire access can be found on the NCRT solutions on the internet. It can also be found on studyrankers.com or successcds.com or toppers.com. There are so many. Choose anyone which suits you. Read regularly, write regularly, talk in English, think in English, and have a very, very, very happy life without any loss of any spring in your life. Thank you so much.